What's going on guys, John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to look at arrays in JavaScript. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at arrays, but before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime memberships, all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. In the last video, we looked at FizzBuzz. In this video, we want to look at arrays in JavaScript. And arrays are super useful in any programming language. It doesn't matter if it's JavaScript or Python or Ruby or anything else. Arrays are something you're always, always, always going to use. And an array is basically just a big list. It's a list of things. In Python, they call them lists. In a lot of programming languages, they call them lists. But historically, programming languages call them arrays. They're just arrays of things. And an array can have text, it can have numbers, it can have other arrays, it can have all kinds of objects, it can hold all kinds of things. And that's what makes it really super useful. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this JavaScript series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got a file, I'm calling it arrays.html. It's just our basic starter code that we've always got. So let's come down here and create an array. So you basically create an array the same way you create a variable, right? So remember we let, and then we name it. So let's say toppings equal, and then we use brackets. And inside of our brackets, this is where we define the things, the list of items that are in our array. And we separate them by quotation marks. Now we can use double quotation marks like this, and let's say pepperoni. And then we separate each one by a comma, or you can also use single quotation marks like this. So cheese, it really doesn't matter either one, they're sort of interchangeable. And let's also say mushrooms, and let's say 41, All right. So remember, you can have text, text, as always, has to be in quotation marks, or you can have numbers, as always, not in quotation marks, you can use other arrays. So if we had another array called, you know, pizza toppings, you could have it like that. So uh, it really doesn't matter, we're not going to get into that more sort of intermediate type array. In this video, we're just going to keep it simple, text and numbers. And this is our array, very easy. And now it exists. Now, in order to access this array, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. So let me grab this guy that we've been using. And let's just print onto the screen our entire array. So we can do that just by calling toppings. All right, so if we save this, head back over to our web browser. I'm in my C JavaScript directory. Let's go to uh, arrays.html. You see we have pepperoni, cheese, mushroom, and 41. It's separated by commas, not a lot of spacing going on, so that's not great. But if you just want to see what's in your array, you could do it like this. Now, normally you're not going to do something like this. You're not going to print out the entire array just like that. Uh, what you're going to usually do is grab a specific item. So to grab a specific item, you just pop in those same little bracket guys, and then you type in a number, the number that you want. Now, arrays are indexed things, right? They're indexed on numbers. So the first thing in an array is always the zeroth item. That confuses a lot of people because, you know, they want to think this is the first item, but arrays always start in zero. It doesn't matter what programming language you use, Python, Ruby, anything else, arrays always start at zero. So if we want the zeroth item, we just type in toppings with the brackets and the number zero. So if we save this, head back over here and hit reload, boom, it says pepperoni. If we want this guy, that's the zero, one, two, three, the third index item in our array. So we can do this, go back over here and boom, 41. Now, this is a number. We can do numbery things with it, right? So if we wanted to go toppings plus 10, right? So we could say 41 plus 10, that should be 51. If we come back over here, boom, 51. Uh, same thing with other items, they are not numbers. So when you use the addition symbol for strings and numbers, it just smushes them together, concatenates them. So if we say this, this should say pepperoni 10 in our web browser, sure enough, pepperoni 10. So kind of keep that in mind. That's it. That's an array. Very, very easy to use. Now, let's say we wanted to print out everything in our array one at a time, right? We can do a for loop, right? Or any other kind of loop. So let's go for, and here I'm just going to say I in our toppings array. Now this looks a little bit different than the for loop we talked about when we talked about for loops, but this is just another way to use for loops. If you're looping through a specific item, you could just do it like this. And here, let's, well, let's document, write this guy out. 
Now here it's kind of interesting. If we just type in I, you would think it would print out the thing. So pepperoni, cheese, mushroom, one line at a time. So let's also put in a line break here. And let's also add a line break here so these don't get all smooshed together. In fact, let's do two, all right? But this I here in a for loop isn't actually returning the item, it's returning the index number, right? So it'll return zero, one, two, three onto the screen, one on each line. And we can see this if we save this, head back over here, hit reload, boom, it says zero, one, two, three. Okay, that's not great. We want the actual thing in the array. How do we get to that? Well, remember, these are the index numbers. So once we get the index numbers, we know we could do something like this. Let's just go toppings and then put I in the brackets, right? So this will print out each item, one item on a line, and boom, pepperoni, cheese, mushroom, and 41. Very cool, so that's how to loop through one way. There's many ways you can loop through arrays using all of your different loops that we've already learned. While loop, you could use a while loop too. Uh, let's see, what else can we do? Let's get the length of array. You just might wanna know how many items are in your array. Let's grab this guy. And here, let's say number of items plus, and here, instead of calling toppings and then the item, we can call the dot length function. So it's just toppings dot length. So if we go ahead and save this, head back over here, hit reload, it says number of items four. We know that's true. There's one, two, three, four items in our array. Very cool. Um, let's see, how do we add a new item to an array? add item to array. Well, we could just code toppings dot push and then add whatever we want. So let's go um, Supreme. Supreme pizza, is that a thing? So let me grab this. And here we don't really need to do a loop. Let's just print out and see if Supreme has been added. So if we save this, head back over here, hit reload. We see pepperoni, cheese, mushrooms, 41, and supreme. And we can definitely check to make sure by grabbing the number of items again. So let's let's grab this real quick, and print this out underneath it. So here, number of items is five, it used to be four. So, okay, visually we can confirm that, but it's also nice to do it programmatically too. Now, how do we remove an item? Let's get rid of this number. So that's the zero, one, two, third item. Well, this gets a little tricky. So let's come down here and let's say remove item. There's a couple of ways to do this. Now, the first one is just to call the delete keyword here function. And then let's just go toppings. And then we'll pass in three. Now, I want to print out the toppings again, and also the length. So if we do this, if we save this head back over here and hit reload, here we see pepperoni, cheese, mushrooms, 41 is gone, but you'll notice there's still a comma, like it's still there. And we can confirm this, it still says five. Now we remove the number 41, there should only be four things, but there's not. There's one, two, three, four, five. Even though there's nothing there, the array is still keeping track of the space that the thing was in, right? So that's usually not great. You probably don't want that. So in that case, what we can do is you, we can use the splice function. So here, let's remove forever with splice. Now, splice doesn't actually remove the thing. It removes it, but it what it does is it creates a whole new array with everything that was in the old array without the thing you're splicing out of it. So if we just wanted to get rid of that 41, we could just call toppings dot splice. And this takes two arguments. One, which item do you want to remove? We want to re remove that third one. How many items do we want to remove? Just one, right? So this will actually create a new toppings array. And we could call it toppings two if you wanted to, or just if you wanted to keep it the same, we could do it like that. So here, let's come back here and let's grab this and print out onto the screen what our new array looks like and the number of items in it. So if we save this, head back over here and hit reload. Now you can see up here, that those two little commas are still there. Down here, they're not anymore. So, and we can confirm that by visually seeing, okay, pepperoni one, two, three, four. Sure enough, four, this little empty gap that's not even a gap. 
is gone. We've spliced it out. We've created a whole new array that's named the same as the old array, and uh, it only has four items. So those are arrays. You can do lots of other things with arrays, but I think this is a nice little intro to them. I don't want to overwhelm you. The big thing is think of them as lists, and they are numbered, and they start at zero. You're going to forget. You're going to think this is the first one. No, no. Remember, arrays start at zero. Say it over and over until you remember that. You're still going to forget, <laughs> but you'll figure it out when you're writing your code and it doesn't work the way you think it is. You go, oh, yeah, arrays start at zero. I should have remembered that. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you like, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. That's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Doing over 180,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Alder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.